mobile platform architect at Aweber Communications. We're an email marketing and communication tool shop located outside of Philadelphia. And um, today I'm going to be talking about Google Charts. Um, who's familiar with Google Charts? Okay, good. So it's a JavaScript API for quickly creating um, simple and easy to use charts that um, end graphs that are powerful, easy to use, and best of all, they're free. Today I'm going to talk about how you can incorporate Google Charts into native Android apps using a web view and very little code. So now I know what you're thinking. This is an absolutely awful, wretched, terrible idea. Why would I want to use a web-based solution with JavaScript in my native Android app? Well, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that this is a one-size-fits-all solution, that everybody should be using it in every type of application, but there are a few good reasons that I chose to look into this um, route that I'd like to share with you. And just like any solution, there's going to be some pros and cons associated with it, and in the end of the day, you can decide whether or not it's appropriate for your particular situation. <clears throat> so there's a bunch of reasons why I decided to look into Google Charts for native Android development, and the, uh, so here I'm going to give you the top three. The first one is that there is no, as you know, there's no native built-in um, support for any sort of charting or graphing in the Android SDK. So what does that mean? If you want to build something, you're looking at native drawing code in a canvas. Now, I don't know about you, maybe you're into that sort of thing, but native drawing code isn't my favorite part of Android development. So I wanted to look for some sort of library solution that could maybe help me out a little bit, abstract some of that away. Um, and then also, there isn't really a single library solution that's gotten consensus from the community that people have thrown their sort of, uh, support behind, um, similar to like, there isn't the action bar Sherlock of uh, charting libraries. The second reason is that a lot of the open source libraries I found to do this client side um, have limited features or they aren't necessarily being actively maintained. Maybe they only have a couple of types of charts available. Maybe the options are limited about how you can customize them. And not only that, but like the commit histories are looking pretty sparse over the last few years. And then finally, um, I wanted the ability to get something up and running quickly for prototyping and proof of concept and whatnot that then at some point later in the future, if, if I wanted to, I could go back and swap in some, some sort of a custom solution. So as I mentioned, there are a variety of client-side libraries out there that have been around for some time. Um, most of them came out around eClair or Froyo, and they kind of still look like they're made for eClair and Froyo. Um, you can see even a lot of these screenshots I pulled off the main page of the project, and they're using kind of the uh, system status bar from 2.x. So you can tell that they need some love. And now, certainly an option is to customize any one of these solutions or contribute to it. Um, but again, you're getting into a, a lot of data drawing code and um, might not be the best thing for your first iteration on a project. So let's take a quick look at the pros and cons of the client-side libraries. So they are open source, which is good. Um, if you want to go that route, you can contribute to them. They're self-contained in the sense that everything you need is bundled into the application. And they're easy to integrate in the way that you would integrate any other Android library. Drop it in the project or pull it down from Maven or Ans or Gradle or whatever. So the cons, as I mentioned before, there are limited features for these libraries. Um, they targeted older platform versions they originally created, so they're not necessarily taking advantage of the latest and greatest on um, Jelly Bean. The look and feel looks like they were created for 2.x. Um, customization can be difficult, and the support that they've enjoyed hasn't been the best. So this led me to Google Charts. Now, as I mentioned, this is a web JavaScript API. Uh, here's an example I pulled off the home page from the project. And the latest version of the Google Charts API is based on um, SVG and HTML5 which is really nice, it's lightweight, it's interactive. They recently deprecated the, uh, the previous version, which was based on returning images. Now, if you want to target uh, older versions of Android for 2.x, you're going to have to go with the image version, the, the deprecated version of the library, because you don't have full SDG support in web views on 2.x. But if you're doing anything honeycombing up, then you can feel free to use the um, SVG version. <coughs> 
Um, so yes, like I said, this is a, a simple example of a pie chart that came from the home page of the project, which simply breaks down uh, daily activities by what percentage of your time you're spending on each. Back when I was um, commuting on a daily basis from Philly to New York, the, uh, the uh, commute section was a lot bigger. Basically, like it was all yellow. <laughs> So the pros and cons of Google Charts. Uh, it's feature rich. There's probably 10 or more different varieties of charts you can get from it. It's got a very simple API that requires uh, uh, only a small amount of code to, to get something up and running. Uh, it's customizable in that you can pass in a variety of different options. It uses responsive design, which means it's going to adapt to the space that you give it. Um, and we'll get into some examples of how that works on Android later. And it's also interactive if you're using the latest version. The cons of it, and admittedly this is a big one, so it does require a network connection. Um, well, let's think about that for a second. If you're building an app that is wanting to display data, chances are it's getting that data from some server somewhere. So you're already going to need a network connection. And so if you're already pulling down your data over the network, to make one more call is, it's going to add an additional amount of load time, but it's not necessarily a deal, a deal breaker for me, unless you're building a an application is basically all charts. Um, and I guess the other way to look at it is if you can't get the data that you want to display in the graph, the fact that you can't display the graph is kind of secondary at that point. Have you found any way to like cast the graph? Um, not yet, but I, I would imagine that if you did some sort of response caching or even just, um, uh, or especially if you're using the image version and you're, and you're caching those images, then that would definitely be a good option. Um, and then uh, finally, backward compatibility. At, like I mentioned, you would have to use the older version, the image version, if you wanted to go for 2.x, and that might even help out the caching issue as well. Yeah? Why is it making a network connection? Is there rendering going on in the cloud somewhere? Or? Right, right. So uh, I'm going to show an example of that. The, the API is calling out to the servers to actually render the graph and then sending it back. So here's a quick example I put together um, of a static HTML page that's using the API to render a graph about how much pizza I ate last night. So here we have the four different um, toppings, mushrooms, onions, olives, and pepperoni, and then the y-axis is the number of each slice I've eaten. In this case, three mushroom, one onion, one olive, and two pepperoni. This is what the HTML looks like to put together that graph. Um, so you're loading the JavaScript API, which is the visualization API that Google provides. Um, underneath where you're loading the scripts, you can see where it's calling packages core chart. This is important because this tells you what kind of chart you want to make. Core chart happens to be the name they use for the column chart. You can also use pie chart, line chart, bar chart, which is um, horizontal bars. Um, and, and there's a number of other options as well. And so as you move further down, you can see I have commented out the draw chart function. We're going to take a look at that in a second. And then the, there's just an empty div at the bottom that is where the chart gets loaded into once it returns. <clears throat> so here's that draw chart function. And all we're doing here is setting up a data table with two columns, one for toppings, one for slices, and then um, feeding in our data, how many we ate. And that's what you saw represented in the graph. Further down, we can set some different options. Uh, this is where you can do additional customization. All, the only option we're setting right now is the 